Um, yeah, I'm Adam. Um, I'm ComCom chairperson and help run the website redesign uh, project. I work at LinkedIn full time as I help run the design system over there. Uh, what else? I guess that's it. Oh, and everybody knows Gary. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm a developer advocate at Microsoft. I uh, work, do a lot of things in Node. I'm trying to do more. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I can give a little bit of a quick brain dump because I think a lot of us have context here for website redesign, but I'll kind of talk about where we've been, where we're going, what the plan is, what's next. Um, so, started God, like a year ago now um, with a I was trying to figure out what a, what a website redesign might look like. I really wish I could share, because um, it started out with a couple uh, Medium posts uh, for me, this epic length. You can go find it. Do we have like a, we have a chat? Let me uh, grab an issue for us to go in so I can drop links for you all to open. Um, let's go over to um, the Node.js slash website redesign repo. And we're going to pop into issue. She just closed it, unfortunately. Just, it's fine if it's closed. Just yeah. Do it in the post. Uh, we're going to go open to issue 155 in the website redesign. I'll drop links in there so that we can, like, yeah, all look at stuff together. Um, lieu of sharing. Uh, so it started out on uh, Medium a good chunk of time ago. 159. Uh, uh, 155. Yeah. Um, with this kind of epic length uh, article I posted a while back um, called uh, Redesigning Node.js, part one. Yep. Um, so I did kind of just a competitive analysis of a whole bunch of other uh, websites uh, similarly in the space. So this was uh, of, uh, Ember and Scala and the Go website. It's kind of picking what's good, what's bad, what we like, what we didn't like. Um, and from that, kind of came up with an information architecture idea for how we can improve the current website. Went through and reviewed all the current content, stuck it into place. Um, there was a lot of conversation online with the existing website uh, team and with a whole bunch of new folks talking about information architecture and just making sure that all the content fits into there. Um, and then from there, uh, put together uh, a envision board uh, with uh, a whole bunch of the link I just dropped in the issue as well. Um, which is kind of like a, a scaffolding of how the website's going to look. Got a few questions like, is the site going to be blue? Is it how it's going to look? No. Um, it's just for structure and like information, uh, uh, yeah, information structure. Um, and then we uh, wanted to start getting started on building something, made a few uh, technical choices and had the uh, pleasure of working with Miles, who cut a deal with Google to get us the domain in Node.js.dev. Um, we spun up a new dedicated code repo. So the repo that you're all looking in right now um, is the website redesign repo. Uh, there is also Node.js slash Node.js.dev, uh, which is the kind of code repository. Let's talk about unifying the two. Opted to keep them separate. Website redesign is kind of the admin repo, and Node.js.dev is the code repo. Um, but Node.js.dev is the home of Node.js.dev. So if you all go there, um, you'll see a, a page that looks very, very similar to the uh, learn page on the Envision board. Um, so we there was a requirement for launching a .dev domain as part of the uh, official domain launch that Google was doing. Um, it was a requirement that you have to have some kind of content up there uh, that is not just a copy or a redirect of some other content. Back into testing. If we're not projecting, might as well. Yeah, um, yeah so we needed to get some content up there. So we kind of took the layout of this, uh, this wireframe, turned it into uh, the, the site you see at Node.js.dev. Um, if you go take a look at the repo, it's a Gatsby site, um, single page. Split app. Um, it's an awesome framework for building uh, documentation and kind of pulling in content from a whole slew of different sources. Um, and 
I'm missing. Right, we have a, a wonderful coworker of mine at LinkedIn um, who's a developer turned designer. He works on the design systems team with us. Um, he's been hacking away on uh, new look and feel um, since he got involved uh, a little bit ago. Um, he's finally ramping up now that his last project ended, side project ended. Um, so he's been dropping uh, uh, design board updates uh, in the website redesign meeting issues uh, that, have, that have popped up. Um, we opted like, not to have the last meeting, um, partially because of the cloud summit, which was in transit. Um, but if you look at the last meeting issue that is open in there, um, there is a, a gift that he posted of his some of his latest work that he's been packed away on. So we're going to have full fidelity mocks uh, soon from him. Um, but there's a lot of work that needs to happen in the meantime. Like we have a we have a site that's up and running. We have a site that deploys automatically when you merge into master, which is awesome. Um, but we kind of have to start thinking about how to wire up data for the rest of the parts. Um, I think as far as IA goes, um, we have a good direction to work with here. Um, and there's some pretty well scoped out uh, sections of the site to start tackling next. And that's kind of, I was hoping to take this session to focus on, um, you know, make some technical decisions around how we're going to move forward um, with the API docs page, the releases page, the, you know, all of this, um, and maybe start actually opening fan grade issues that we can divvy out and treat this kind of like a sprint planning session um, for the next, uh, next few months. Um, but yeah, before we, I guess, dive into all that, anything else folks want to bring up before we get into nitty gritty? Questions, comments, ideas? Where would this always exist alongside the JS the, that's a good question. Um, I think the hope is once we get content parity, um, we will approach the website team who's aware of this and like been helping out um, uh, when needed. We'll, we'll approach the website team and propose essentially switching over the site. Okay. Um, so the hope is the content that's currently on nodejs.dev will move over to .org. And then we get to have a fun conversation of what do we do with the .dev domain now? Like, do we just make it a mirror of .org or is it, uh, you know, you can give people just mm -hmm. access to yeah. the domain. But I think that's still a long time now. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. So okay. my guess would be that's not going to happen for a while. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not, <laughs> I think it's just not going to happen. But oh, no, for a while. For a while like, yeah. yeah. Um, for far off, so. But yeah, that's, that's the hope is what we're doing here will become the new, the new site. Um, yeah, we work pretty hard to like go and track down a whole bunch of lead pages on the main site and figure out what we didn't need anymore, what we had to include, what doesn't make sense with Merge Foundation. Yeah. Cool. Oh, um, well, we can, I'd love to dive in and actually start talking about some of this nitty gritty. Um, so one, one thing I want to say is that mm -hmm. oh, we have two people who aren't from like compound context or like two people from the technical context of GSE and related products. Um, do you have any questions or concerns specifically? Other than okay, me too. What, one thing that might be if it's in charge of what build or really like mm -hmm. the different web groups and FM for it and stuff that comes about that. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot more I want on this this learn page. Like right now it's just we had an amazing donation from uh, Flavio Copes um, for getting started guys. Just like dumped his entire batch of markdown that he published in there. One question. Um, about, sorry, go ahead. But there's a lot of more like advanced content I want to get in there. And there's actually a lot of guides currently buried on the node, the current node site that um, would be good to figure out where to fit in. Can I go delete those images, the header images? Yes. They really, really don't yeah. fit. No, they don't. Are they in there still? They're there. Yeah. They're in. <laughs> go free. Um, Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. well, uh, what's the function of, let's see, so eventually the Node.js dev, the Node.js dev would supplant potentially the new, no. the, never, uh, the old website, or once it reaches feature parity or whatever, is that what I was hearing? So the, the, the Not content, the domain, the, but. The, the, the content that will be, that is on Node.js dev will be basically transferred over. Oh, transferred, right? Yeah, so, so it'll be, so it'll, it'll, be it'll replace it, yeah. the current content, and that domain will, Probably be mirrored for a teeny bit, but then 
once that's done, we can figure out what to do. Better. So my, my main question is, uh, so what is the goal currently of the, of the Node.js dev site? Like, is it a playground to experiment with new new things or whatever, yeah. or is it a place for, I see the learn page prominently featured? Is Exclusively it, featured, yeah. Exclusively, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the, the .dev domain, it's kind of like a staging site where we can uh, you know, get it out in the world, get feedback, keep iterating on it. I guess my question is mostly, is it, is the goal of the website redesign to get a modern architecture set up for the site, or is it to provide something that the Node.js site currently doesn't provide? I would say both. Oh, both. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a ground up rebuild of the current site um, and kind of a reimagining of a lot of the content. Um, so the current site does not have any getting started resources. How to learn Node? How do you? How do I install the damn thing beyond downloading a binary? Like, um, so there's there's a lot of content um, and use cases that aren't met by just the API docs and just the big old download button. Um, and we're with the the learn page is currently in there. We're getting closer, um, but there's so much more content we can fit in there, um, including. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I am an SRE, how do I prop up node in production? I'm doing burp analysis on my, on my server, how do I, you know, inspect uh, under the hood to see what's going on? Um, you know, these, these advanced guys, that there, there are a few floating around on the, the current website. We have that, um, what do they call it on the site? The advanced guides on the site. But it's really just kind it's of the guides. Or guides, yeah. It's just kind of a hodgepodge of what, um, what folks in the, in the, deep in the technical side have just decided that they want to write. I mean, it's, it's, I wanna, a, it's also three years of technical debt in yeah. a project, a website that was a temporary website. Like yeah. that, that website was temporary and it has not been temporary, it's been permanent. Mm -hmm. I'd really love to actually take a, make a conscious effort to tell a story with the documentation that we write now. And, you know, think about as somebody coming to the site with this use case, how do we in introduce them from, from zero to the most advanced use case? Um, so they can get up to speed and what they need as fast as possible. Um, instead of just relying on kind of, uh, somebody has this top of mind, they're gonna write an article about it because it just meant the feature and then forget about it. Um, in the, it's actually quite hard to find the, the guides on the current website. Is that anyway. the knowledge-based stuff? That's, that's the it, knowledge-based, knowledge -based, yeah. Yeah. Those are um, yeah, they're old, some of them are outdated. Um, a lot of them could use some, some TLC. Um, so that's that's kind of the hope for the learn page. Um, so to create a thread through being able to teach some mm -hmm. some different uh, getting started information. Exactly, and you'll actually see on the uh, the envision board um, that the learn page does in fact have two different sections. Like you, this is right now just quick start advanced guides on there, and I believe on the actual nojs.dev site itself, um, it actually yeah, we do have two sections like that. We have quick start and getting started. Um, but you can imagine, and this might include some uh, interactive interaction changes, like how you view all the articles and everything. But you can imagine that there's a there's a section for, like I said, the SREs or uh, you know, uh, process introspection on the debug my process. You can, uh, you know, there's a so there's there's a whole bunch of different stories we can tell for different types of users coming in to learn, um, and actually give this uh, pretty comprehensive overview when we get started. Um, so that's a that's a section just AP or just documentation content, like learn page content, um, is uh, a pretty large need still. Like we have enough there that like if we got everything else on the site switched over and like uh, have content parity, um, like I'd feel pretty comfortable switching it over with the content that's there right now, just the basic getting started stuff. <laughs> but we can make it a lot better. Um, so something I really wanted this site to um, this site to uh, enable was was to let people manage documentation where they think it should live so like uh, this thing will is going to start showing API docs at some point API docs should not live outside of node core because <laughs> nobody will update them if they don't live nobody will tell code. us to do that <laughs> yeah because I mean that wouldn't that would not be tenable in any way, shape or form um, so this the site has kind of has this prerequisite of it has to be able to pull content from across the project and stitch it together like I don't I don't want the community page I don't want that content living outside of the Kong Kong repo 
yeah. so we'll never get looked at otherwise. Um, so the nice thing about Gatsby is you can kind of set a dependency on anything and it it's builds a thing and stitches it together. So um, yeah, uh, API docs are kind of a special little beast because um, we <laughs> all this stuff also needs to get translated. Um, so we're working with the IGN group to figure out how, like what their what their published workflow looks like, what what type of artifact they they put out there for us, and then how we can adjust that again and, and rebuild it. Um, so there's there's a lot of outstanding work there. We're kind of waiting on IGN to get their pipeline in order. We had a, a good session yesterday with them, um, so they can, we can figure out how that's going to work. Um, but we also get to figure out how we are not blocked by that in the meantime. Um, so like for the API docs specifically, right now every version of every um, JSON parsed uh, file in the API docs folder is just living currently deployed on .org. Um, so for like first first pass integration, we can hit that up like it's a, an API. Um, just go fetch the JSON as we need it um, and, uh, and render it on the page how we see fit. Um, so there's like baseline work in the site right now to um, the integrate API docs. Just, you know, we don't have a, a fully fledged design yet for it, but there's a lot of data work just to get the damn thing hooked up. Um, I'd love to see, uh, I think a, a good strategy for the, the first approach here is like we, we always bake in the latest release into the site itself. Um, Gatsby server side renders for uh, initial initial page render and then like load stuff and navigate through a nice setup. Um, but it would be nice if the like the the current uh, LTS um, API docs were baked in the site, so like we get that for benefit of it's always loaded. Um, Google sees it as just a you know, static page when it renders. But then if you like go look at historical documentation, we can have that hosted somewhere, hit it up like an API, um, so it's not part of the bundle. We don't we don't have to bake in every single <laughs> version into the SDA. I mean, that would be bad. You could also um, you could also theoretically build it. A secondary SDA that does that, and it's, <laughs> it is invisible. That's how we do it at LinkedIn. Is every version of our app is deployed separately, and we literally hit up the, the device the documentation. Yeah. A different is deployed at a different um, version path. So probably yeah. that's. I think that's a little yeah, yeah so over, overly complicated for for the node site. So there's technical decisions to make around you know how we how we design that and how we wire all the data together that it's non-trivial and we can do without a, a high fidelity design in the meantime. Um, similar question, I actually want to do the releases, right? Yeah. I I really want to figure out a good way to um, if you take a look at the uh, Envision board, um, there's that entire releases section now pretty prominently displayed um, with the uh, you know, uh, extra download options and hopefully a better communication model for the release process. And, um, it's it's kind of hard for new users to grok the the release flow. <laughs> and I love um, I, Ember does the best job of describing their release process that I've seen so far. Give like, illustrations for each release line and give you a pretty nice illustrated guide of how that all works. I'd love to make that. It's the Ember release guide. Yeah. I'd love to make that for the for the node uh, uh, the node site as well. Something similar, a little less cutesy, but um, equally clear. Um, but we have a uh, similar to the API docs. Like we have data integration needs for releases as well. Like uh, below the I I kind of envisioned um, that below the uh, the like top three LTS current nightly download options at the top. Um, and this kind of like small description of the release process, the same uh, oh. descriptions down below. Yeah, I know, right? Missed. Isn't it? It's like the best release documentation I've seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, release. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, like it, it makes something that's pretty uh, yes. dense, like approachable from developers at any level. Um, there's no reason why it has to be dense. Um, down below, I'm, I'm envisioning this kind of like infinite scroll searchable. Um, this table exists elsewhere on the node site. Um, it's just buried if you want to find all the different versions. Um, also, similarly hosted in a giant JSON blob. I'm pretty sure somewhere on .org. It's rebuilt for every every release. Is that right? Yeah. Like there's data work to be done to pull this in and like lay out the page and get all the rest set up. So 
this is another vertical of, of work where um, we can we can start integrating data and getting functionality in there without a, a final design to work off of um, like if we just kind of code to the wireframe um, yeah um, but there's kind of that outstanding question of this is uh, is having these these JSON files just sitting out um, on server on an active like is that the ideal way to do it or is there a better way to integrate um, that information uh, like it works well for the first pass but is it that is there something better that we could work with with our build or release working group to kind of have a tighter integration there? Sure. Yeah. One of the issues I want to discuss is about the discoverability. Mm -hmm. So uh, the kind of issues which we search in the net, usually stack overflow comes in the top, then even the uh, node.js slash node uh, issue repo comes up, mm -hmm. but not necessarily the API documentation, the, the green website or mm -hmm. the node.dev. Yeah. So uh, is it is it because the the kind of topic that is being uh, searched is not present over there, or I mean, should we have I mean, add some yeah, kind of sorry, yeah? Should we add some semantic uh, capability in the website? I, I don't know, but my experience is that discoverability is is a little bit low on both the websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my hunch should be it's a chicken and egg problem. Like it's not a it's not a resource that people link people to. Like if you're if you're looking for help with a node issue, that's not just I'm looking up a method that I need to know. Yeah. Um, then you're gonna you're not gonna link to the node website. You're gonna link to Stack Overflow or to the to a GitHub issue. And so Google knows like this is not a resource that we have people towards. Um, but if we if we turn the site into a resource that that people want to use, publicize it enough, that will that type of the the search engine discoverability problem will. Yeah. will likely change. Um, yeah, we'll of course try and keep the best practices for all the metadata for search engines to crawl it and everything. But I mean, um, so right now, like a part of that is our, you know, if you run a lighthouse test on the docs, the API docs, it, the SEO element is an 85, which is like a warning effectively, mm -hmm. like you need to do better. And Google takes that, like, that's a very serious thing to them. It's like, if you're not doing well, you're not going to get ranked well. Um, GitHub does well. Stack Overflow does well. So if we want to be ranked well, we have to be improving for that. And as far as I know, there's never been any kind of um, search engine optimization uh, or like auditing of certain elements inside of the API docs to help improve that. Um, so you know, I, I think Gatsby does a lot out of the box. Yeah. Um, and then there's minor tweaks that we can make like basically one person can go and get us to 100 yeah. which is very nice um and that, that should theoretically just give us a flat improvement on that um and then you know once that's done i, I definitely think there are individuals at google who are doing uh, you know jobs your background doing a lot of work with google and seo right now uh i i we could ask them if they'd be willing to come and like Sure, use our docs as a way to, you know, a case study for your work. And I don't doubt that they would be willing to take that on. Really yeah. so, because it's a high impact thing. So help them succeed and help us succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have a search box in one of these websites, which is um, basically doing a custom search with, with some yeah. semantic capability? There's actually, I'd love to kind of pick your brain a little bit about how we can improve the format of API docs long term. Because mm -hmm. um, right now it's it's all in, um, it's it's somewhat structured data, right? Yeah. Um, but there's there's probably better ways to, to document it um, than just in markdown files that you kind of manually keep up to date with the code. Um, I know there's, there's services like what, uh, Golia. Yeah, it, they would be more than willing to give us their service for free. Probably yeah. as well. Um, I mean, there's just a, a Gatsby has a great ecosystem around it. Yeah. Um, so they actually, their Golia has a plugin for Gatsby, which we just add it and it adds, you know, API docs, code search on the site. Um, so it, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, but I, uh, um, but that it doesn't. Um, we can we can build a tool much like the 
kind of the standout I found for API docs and the sites I compared was the uh, Scala documentation, um, where it's all you can, um, you know, it's, it's kind of what you'd expect of a, an API docs page. Everything's very uh, uh, broke. Uh, know, library API. Oh, never mind. That is ugly as shit. Where did this go? Um, was it Scala? I don't remember. Screenshots in the article. Um, anyway, it's all it's all broken up uh, quite beautifully, and you're able to um, search by by method or property, or okay. um, and actually see inputs and outputs. And it'll tell you how it relates to all the other modules. Um, something else. Part of that's an information architecture issue. No. Yeah. So one of the things I'm most curious about because um, this is something that my my work specifically wants me to help you guys with. Mm -hmm. um, so you have you know. Utilize me as part of for, for content creation or whatever is probably mm -hmm. the best way I can help with this because we're going to be creating content on getting started and yeah. you know, et cetera. But um, so I see several, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm making a bunch of assumptions here with everything, but I see several different tracks on which things are moving and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out where the blockers are and where I can help, uh, you, know, you know, remove some of those. It sounds like, you know, there's the, the technical technology of actually building the site, mm -hmm. you know, which goes slow or whatever. Just to design, which I'll kind of love them with the technology because some of these people are working closely together to on the tech on the wireframe and then building it out. Mm -hmm. There's the content side of it, which is obviously creating the content you want to see. And then the final one is likely because of how disparate all this is and how it would be drawing content from different committees, different information architecture, essentially, in terms of you have all the content and everybody produces it, but to different formats and standards. Mm -hmm. Technical debt to fix all that essentially. Um, so, I'd like, that's one thing that I look at as if, like, if we could figure out a format to make it play nice with SEO and everything, mm -hmm. and a markdown format or whatever, then I can, you know, independent of what y'all are doing, I can run on creating content or tweaking the existing yeah. content into the format, et cetera. So, okay. so where, the, where are you, like, where are your blockers currently with things? Um, there's there's three different, <laughs> three different blockers right now. Um, one is on the content side. Like you said, like we can always improve content. Um, depending on where on the site you're looking at, you're going to probably edit the content differently. If it's API docs, it's going to be a node core if it's in a bunch of markdown files. Um, if it's learn page docs that currently lives in a website we designed, point it literally, I think it's called the documentation folder <laughs> right there. Uh, it's all just markdown, folds in. It's like a they have a front matter little blob that tells it how to display on the on the learn page. Um, yeah, um, presumably like releases page will be just be a, a hard coded page with a description of it in the in the documentation repo, um, but it'll pull in data to show the, the historical information. So we have we have kind of like the content side of it, which um, yeah needs needs some TLC. I mean, um, there's specifically a, you mean getting that into a like edited it into a good format, or, or um, then there's just gaps. Because with there's gaps in the API docs, it sounds like it would need to get massaged into a format that would be play well with the site. Yeah. But, you know, I see that as like that's somebody, some other technical committee or some other yeah, yeah. Um that's the I think that's the second type of blocker we have is we need to integrate with stuff that's currently there the to get people. to get parity. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. so the the second second section where we need we need a lot of work to be done is just like we need API docs, we need releases information, um, we need uh, integration with like a, uh, past, uh, you know, we have a whole user story section on the foundation side that's probably going away that we'd love to get onto the site where we host that information. Um, so there's like that, those data integrations of pulling in new content and just getting basic parity. And then there's kind of the lower level infrastructural work. Like we need a way to, uh, like we're working on the IATN problem right now, but I just opened an issue this morning. Um, like we need to get a, an IATN library. Uh, like to help our library for for Gatsby install, like pick one, make sure it works with JSON, point it at a thing, and it'll work. Um, so there's there's like the the core infrastructure for the site itself. Those are kind of the three areas I see where we need to kind of drive forward. And if all three are in a good place, we'll be able to flip the switch and turn the site on. Um, and probably the the place where the most work can be done right now is the documentation content and the integrations. Um, so like just to unblock the pipes for getting API docs in there. What just has to be done for that. But yeah. I mean, I, I also think that, like, I, 
I, I, what, what, what do we, I, I know this is like, I'm not trying to be rich. What, what do we want to get out of the session? What's the goal here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my, um, something that another, it sounds like we're all kind of level set now, I think. Got the, got the goals of what we're trying to do long term. Um, I, I would, at least personally, find value in, in kind of treating this like a like a sprint planning. So like, let's actually deep dive into how we're building API docs. Let's get the project board set up. Let's make a bunch of tickets for the battle that we can drive against over the next month or so to, to get it built out. Um, and then we can you know, treat the treat our regular meetings like like a, a second meetings, like sprint meetings. Um, so we could we could take that approach. We're literally sitting here making tickets, finding work. Um, we could keep talking about you know arbitrary visions for the, the future and like you know where I think that'll have yeah, less of a concrete impact. Yeah, <laughs> we can do that for a very long time. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of my vision was um, the sprint planning model. Let's just make well. a bunch of tickets. Um, ends at ten thirty. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes. Okay, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to work through the coffee break. Yeah. Sure. I'd like, I'd like okay. to get a bunch of issues, man. I've got a few things I have to do. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll be in here making issues um, for at least how I see how technical work should go, and we can keep talking offline about integration there. But um, I would love to keep using you as a resource for the, we haven't thought about the releases page a lot, um, and I wanna make sure that that's done Done well and done right. So, yeah, I can um, add a project to the agenda. Awesome. Yeah, what type of content you'd like to see on there, and yeah. then we can get our, our designer and our, you know, documentation folks to make it something that's digestible. In the, I would love to that. Way. Yeah. Some way that's awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. We can get that. Um, yeah. That, Look out for issues online, and we'll keep hacking away. Okay, so the, um, <laughs> I mean, is anyone here who's not already involved interested in getting more involved with this? No. <laughs> right here. Yeah. I'm peripherally involved and interested in getting more involved. Mm -hmm. um, those of you who are not interested in getting more involved, uh, if you if you, there are people who you think would like to get involved in the project uh, in some way, uh, might be a good way to help them get involved. Um, right now, it's a lot of engineering work that just needs to be done, um, especially if they're better at going through doing uh, like self-guided stuff. Like, basically, you can come into this repo and do whatever you need to, and like whatever you feel is right, and it'll probably end up landing as long as it's not like ridiculously or not Yeah. Um, so you know that's a that's a thing, and if if you know people who are willing or able to do that, it would be awesome to help get them on board. Yeah. I'm happy to help usher that. And I know I can. Any any front end devs who really wants to get their hands dirty, yeah, and this type of thing. Who cares about Node docs? Like, yeah, it's just it's a lot of front end building right now. We just have to get the code out there. Um, so it's a great opportunity for for new front end devs who are just getting diving into these types of projects. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything else we want to chat about, or we can call it early and go get extra coffee? Yeah, cool. Uh, I'll be hanging out in here making tickets. So, <laughs> yep. Just step it over to you for a little bit. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah.